compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action, and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Thread connecting worlds. Legend has it when the Great Flood happened, the water subsided, the survivors went out of the Noah's Ark and saw a strange scene. There was a carpet of unusual design on the deck of the huge vessel. It was there because during the Great Flood, wool had fallen on the deck and absorbed the water while the sheep, frightened by the long journey, had been shifting from one foot to another all the time. They stepped on the wall and as a result, felt appeared. Although a lot of time had passed since the flood, technique had not changed significantly. I have always dreamt of learning the felting techniques. Did I say it correctly? Yes, you did. It is as simple as kneading dough. All you need to perform the sacred action is your hands, water, and sometimes fire to warm the water. Let's try learning the most ancient handicraft technique. These ceremonies take on special sacred significance because felt is used in them. A person chooses felt while felt chooses a person. That's right, it chooses a person. From the Middle Ages, Kazakh felt was a monetary equivalent. Chapter 1 Most Ancient First First, the sheep are sheared. As for sheep shearing, first it should be done in autumn. The wool was stickier in autumn, that's why it was easier to felt it. It was more durable and suitable for practical use. However, before shearing the sheep, they had to be domesticated. It was approximately 10 to 12,000 years ago. Actually, wool of wild sheep was felted too. The wool of domesticated sheep is excellent and incomparable with the wool of wild sheep. Thanks to the upper wool layer, domesticated sheep underwool is longer and thinner. During the felting process, wool fibers interlock under the influence of water and steam and demonstrate unique examples of handicraft. <laughs> If they were engaged in cattle breeding, they used everything this occupation provided them with. This included wool and they made felt and textiles out of it. First, the information about it appeared in Sumerian and Assyrian legends. Later, the Argonauts, risking their lives, went to fetch the Golden Fleece. According to one version, the Golden Fleece is just a breed of fine wool sheep. The ancient Greek hero's aim was to fetch them, although it seems strange nowadays, gold has been found in the wool of fine wool sheep. These sheep are called Merino. They are native of Central Asia, and Merino translates as nomad. Archaeological materials prove that felt appeared at the beginning of nomadism. Felt has always been used everywhere. Gaius Julius Caesar also made a contribution to this. On his orders, a special sheep breed was bred. In antiquity, the most famous felting center was in Pompeii. In ancient Rome, felt makers were called Fulans, and the goddess of wisdom, Minerva, was the patroness of this craft. Interestingly, Minerva Festival was held at the same time as Nauris. Some people are still guarding the secrets of making felt clothes. Now let's find out about another story related to another word, felt, voilik, which means home cover or cover for home. It derived from Turkic. The word and material came from the steppe and the nomadic areas. The word oilik stands for dwelling. It is an integral part of a dwelling. It includes the felt which covers a yurt. The felt used inside a yurt at least 
these 50 sheep must be sheared to make a cover for a home or a whole yurt cover. The wool was spread, sometimes it was sprinkled with milk. Ritual wishes were said so it would be easier to felt and it would be more durable. Then the wool was fluffed up with sticks, put on a mat and rolled up. After that, the wool was hit with feet and hands. Large pieces of felt intended for covering years were wrapped around a stick. The stick was attached to horse stirrups and a rider rode for many kilometers until the wool became felted. The finest felt from a flock of a thousand sheep stretched over a frame shaped like the extended bows of a hundred soldiers. Its value doubles in years. When the winter is bitterly cold, Layers of felt covering the yurt to keep it warm. Felt was used to decorate the yurt's interior. It kept the floor warm and decorated the walls. However, this unique footage was filmed in the early 1920s. It is possible to see such a scene nowadays. I always walked on this wall. People from the whole village gathered and I remember a lot of girls. Usually the girls had to clean the wool. As for felt hierarchy, young women prepared the wool for the next process, and extremely wise women took the responsibility for the most important parts of the process. They sang ritual songs associated with felt. They joked and talked to each other. Any creative work done in cooperation was a lot of fun. It should be said that felt is not only sheep wool. Goat and camel wool was also used to make it. There are a lot of camels near the Caspian Sea. They have wonderful wool. Their wool is so soft. Priests and the richest Caspian noblemen wore garments made of it. Chapter 2. Essential and Indispensable I choose yellow because it's the color of the sun. Yes, of the sun. The shape has been defined, wool fibers have been separated and spread and the color has been chosen. Red color was the symbol of life, yellow symbolized wealth, blue, kok tengri, was the color of nature and plants and the white color of milk was considered a sacred color. In general, in ancient times, the most popular felt colors were yellow, red, and white. Red had been their main color, which was followed by a combination of different colors. The most ancient felt carpets were found in the Pazaric burial is an example of fine applique work. There were almost 30 square meters of material felted. Ancient craftsmen had to shear over 100 sheep to produce this marvelous work. Besides this, the remains of clothes have been found in Pazaric. Two felt coats capture attention. <laughs> The coats date from the 5th century BC. Mosaic, applique and embroidery techniques were used to make them. One of the coats was long and loose and the other was short and made of thin felt. Some kind of Kazakh outer garment such as fur and felt coats are similar to the clothes found in the Pazuric burials. Patterned felt stockings, the Kazakh call them baipak, and pointed hats worn by the Kazakhs up to now also have a similarity. Felt usually shrinks during the felting process. It shrinks by 40%. It becomes smaller by 40%? Yes, it becomes smaller. It means that these felt boots were originally large. As for the felt boots or valenke, it seems that the felt bipacks are similar to the ones mentioned in the description of the Pazarek burial, where the makers of the felt boots. Thus, this footwear is ancient too. It was worn in the steppe for millennia. Officially, the first valenke appeared in Russia at the time of the Golden Horde and were called Pimi. Since then, the nomad's felt footwear has become a neighboring state's brand. 
Felt was indispensable to people living in a sharp continental climate. It could be really cold. So we can say that the Kazakh felt influenced Central Asian traditions relating to these crafts. The Great Silk Road also made a significant contribution to the spread of felt over the world, especially in the Middle Ages. Chapter 3, Special, Mystical and Healing. Restlessness is unacceptable to felting. Smooth motions and concentration play an important role in this process. I know the people engaged in felting always were patient, gentle and even meek. It is a very labor-intensive work. On the other hand, it helps to calm down. It warms your body and soul. This enchanting feeling of comfort and coziness was transmitted from the craftswomen to other people. Thus, felt was considered a magic material. Nomads believed that felt talisman brought luck and decorated their houses with them. They have some idols made of felt in the image of man. They place them on each side of the door of the dwelling. Below them, they put a felt model of an udder and they believe that these are the guardians of the cattle and grant them the benefit of milk and fowls. Felt did not only save them from malevolent spirits, but also protected them from enemies' arrows. According to Roman writer Pliny the Elder, no arrow can shoot through felt thoroughly soaked in vinegar. Felt lining was worn beneath chainmails and helmets, Felt could defend fortifications too, and fortress walls were covered with it to prevent salt from corroding the stones. Felt is a waterproof material which retains the heat. Even wet wool warms. For instance, English shepherds soaked their coats in water. As a result, they became thick and protected them from wind. Felt protects from both water and fire. Felt was used to extinguish fire. If you cover fire with felt, it will be put out. Sheep wool is a fire-resistant material. It is used in flame-resistant overall manufacturing because the wool does not burn, but it smolders, hardly emitting any heat. It is even considered that smoke and smell emitted by smoldering felt can cure some diseases. There are many fairy tales about felt. Different people's legends have it that premature babies were swaddled in felt. Besides this, and thanks to its special structure, wool repels dirt and relieves pain. It even was used to treat fractures. Wool contains lanonin, or wool wax, which is the best treatment for arthritis. Felt is also a royal material, which was used during ceremonies. When the ruler comes to the throne, his closest important dignitaries seat him on felt and carrying around in the same way as the sun moves, nine times. Each time, the officials bow down before him. According to tradition, the Khan was put on white felt. This tradition appeared later, but originally future rulers had been covered with felt. The throne had usually been covered with the white felt. The magic strong thin thread of time connects generations and spaces. Epilogue, touching history. While finding out the secrets about the ancient craft, we could feel the therapeutic powers of felting. Of course, you cannot understand all of the subtleties of the craft. Nevertheless, the softness of the felt immediately enchants you. This material is light, warm and pliable. Objects made of felt can be in any shape. A cover for yurts, a colorful carpet, felt boots or an ordinary flower. A flower is in bloom when everything is fine. It symbolizes prosperity and happiness. 
The symbol of prosperity is made with your own hands. It's like touching the history itself.